Google's Performance Max campaigns allow advertisers to show across all of Google's inventory in places like Search, YouTube, Display, Discover, Gmail, and Maps. The results that many businesses are seeing have been very promising, but there's one critique that most advertisers are screaming about, and that is, what data does Google give us inside our Performance Max to be able to optimize the campaign? In this video, I'm going to review five of the top insights and reports that we currently have, and I'm going to give you action steps to help you optimize based on that data. If that sounds interesting, let's discuss. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate, and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have everything that you need to manage your own online marketing campaigns. As I said before, we're going to review some of the top insights that we get out of Performance Max and make sure that you stick around to the end because my fifth point can be a game changer for you and your Google Ads account. Before we jump into the slides, I would be honored if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making content just like this. All right, so we are going to talk about the top data in insights from Performance Max that Google is currently giving us. So the first report that we're going to talk about is the placement report. So I did a video on this calling it the hidden report because it is kind of hard to find. Um, underneath the reports tab inside of Google Ads, you'll see this section right here that says predefined reports. So you hover your mouse over that and you scroll down to the bottom and you'll see this other option. And inside of other, there's performance max campaigns placement. So you select that and essentially this is the report that you get. So on the left here, and I've blurred out the, the URLs for my particular account, but you've got your performance max placement. So that'll either be the website or web page or the app that your ad is showing on. And then right here you have impressions. Now this report is very bare bones. There's not any other metric at this time that you can add in uh, for the placement. So right now it is strictly for impressions. Now, um, there, was, there was a debate whether or not Google Performance Max, you could actually do anything with this report. Um, and shout out to PPC Kirk, because he posed the question on if you are able to add placement exclusions. And the Google Ads liaison down here responded and said, yes, uh, Performance Max currently respects account level placement exclusions. Um, and really the reason why they just report on impressions is because this is really, this is strictly for brand safety. In other words, if you don't want your ad to appear on a website that doesn't align with your, your company's values or your brand, um, that's really the reason why they're allowing you to exclude it. So the action to take is very simple. Um, scan the list of, of apps and URLs and websites that your ad is appearing on. And if there's any that do not align, make sure that you add them as an account level placement exclusion. All right, so the next report that we're gonna look at is the placement type report. It's in the same exact section that we just were and we outlined the steps on how to get to it. And what you're going to do is you're simply going to replace performance max placement with performance max placement type. And when you do this, uh, the report looks very similar to this. Instead of having all the URLs and all the apps that your advertisement is appearing on, you see something like this where it says web page, mobile application, and other. And you'll see the impressions for each of these placement types. And so you might be asking, okay, well, what can you do with this type of information? Well, one thing that we know for most businesses, not every business, but most businesses, um, impressions from mobile apps, so whether it's a game on your iPhone or your Android or just a, a traditional app, they do not convert as well as display impressions from websites. So let's say you have too many apps or too many impressions from mobile apps, um, consider making your performance targets stricter in performance max. So why do I say this? Um, because if you have a strict performance target, 
the performance max, Google, the system knows that it has to really try to find those customers in those placements um, that are that are nearing that conversion. And so what will happen a lot of times is if you make your performance target stricter, so if you make your target ROAS higher, or if you make your target CPA lower, uh, Google will automatically start to funnel traf traffic to the placement types that will be more likely to convert. And so you'll actually start to see a better balance of the impressions um, from those different placement types. So again, the, the action to take is if you're seeing way too many impressions on mobile apps, consider making your performance targets stricter. All right, so the next report that we're gonna look at is the landing page report. And this is not something that you can actually get in Google Ads at this time. So you need to have Google Analytics set up. And so I have a screenshot here with Universal Analytics on the left. Or if you've made the update, I'm not gonna say upgrade, but if you've made the update to GA4, uh, here's a screenshot on the right. So what you need to do is you need to simply create a segment of your performance max sessions. And so I'll walk us through how we did it in Universal Analytics. So you simply create a segment where the campaign contains Pmax or contains performance max or whatever naming convention you use to identify your performance max campaign. So you create that segment and then you simply underneath behavior, site content, landing pages, uh, you apply that segment and then you're able to see the different URLs on your website that are uh, receiving traffic from your Performance Max campaign. You can actually see the stats associated with that as well. So the action to take deals with final URL expansion. So final URL expansion, I'll read here what Google says about it. Use final URL expansion to get more conversions from relevant searches. Google will automatically update the headline for each ad to match search intent and drive the best landing page and, and drive to the best landing page for conversion. Um, so essentially what's happening here is Google has the ability to crawl your website and let's say you have a URL for Performance Max that you wanna send people to. If you have this enabled, Google can actually send them to other URLs on your website that they deem as relevant. Um, which sounds great and it, and it can work out really well for you. But what I have noticed in some of the accounts that I work with is that there are URLs that Google sends traffic to that are not part of the customer journey to make a purchase or to make a conversion on your website. And so when you look at that landing page report inside of Google Analytics, you can pick out any URLs that do not assist with the purchase journey and you can simply exclude them here. You can add exclusion rules for final URL expansion. So the action to take is add final URL expansion exclusions. And if you look at that landing page report and it is just completely out of whack, um, you might wanna consider turning final URL expansion just completely off. So the next report we're gonna look at is the search term insights report. Now this is something that is inside of Performance Max, inside the can campaign underneath the insights tab. So after you've run your campaign for a little while, you'll start to see different search categories here that contain different search terms in these sections, okay? And Google actually does give you data about these search terms or these buckets of search terms. So you can see conversions, clicks, impressions, conversion value, cl uh, click through rate, conversion rate, um, and the search value, a search volume associated with those different search terms. So this is this is you know it's good information. It's not as much data that you as you would receive with standard shopping campaigns, um, but it is something. And so the action to take with this, so if you see some search terms that are really strong performers for you, uh, you're converting really well, you're driving a lot of revenue, you're driving a lot of leads with them, consider catering your assets um, to those strong search term performers. So what I mean by that is potentially in your headlines or in your descriptions, um, consider using some of the language um, that is included in those search terms. So for example, let's say you have a performance max campaign and you sell um, sneakers, okay? And you sell a lot of different shoes, but sneakers, the sneaker search terms are doing really well for you. Well, that can give you a hint that in your headline and in your description, 
uh, description lines, maybe that's one of the terms that you want to highlight towards the front of the advertisement. So sneakers instead of some of the other search terms that aren't performing as well. So if you sell products on your website, the next report that we're going to look at is the listing group report, which is also baked into Performance Max. So after you've run your Performance Max campaign for a while, uh, you can see the listing groups um, and listing groups are essentially a segment of your products or they could be all of your products if you're targeting all of the products from your merchant center feed inside your Performance Max campaign. And you'll see different stats like impressions, clicks, cost, average CPC, etc., for that listing group. And the action to take here is to consider testing the duplication of your asset groups that are linked to that listing group or the segment of products, um, but apply a different audience signal. So an audience signal is essentially the starting point for a performance max campaign. So it's the starting point that you input or you apply for Google to start to find customers based on that. So for example, Google has the ability, um, you have the ability to upload your first party data. So let's say you have a list of your customer email addresses. You could actually import that as an audience signal inside of Performance Max as the starting point for Google to go and find more customers for you. So the action to take is to consider duplicating your asset group. So have essentially the same exact assets and have the same exact um, segment of products that you're targeting, but try out different audience signals to see which ones actually perform better. And then over time, you can actually cater to that particular audience group. In a shameless plug, this was one of my recommendations inside of a recent video that I did. So I'll leave a link in the description below. I hope those insights were helpful for you. I'm curious what you think. Let me know in the comments below what optimization tips you've seen success with inside of Performance Max. And since you've stuck around to the end, I have a free gift that I want to give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for simple tips that can get your business results, this is the document for you. It's completely free. And after you complete the steps outlined in this doc, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more leads or more revenue, you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own digital marketing campaigns without hiring an agency. Thanks again for watching this video. Until next time.